homeless. And so I was going to go to 50 states in 50 days, I think it was, raising money to end homelessness. Because my idea was if we built a big enough pot to use as leverage to call out bigger dollars, bigger donors, to create a fund to fund a think tank that will come up with damn near the cure for homelessness. And then we take the funds, the funding we raised through all 50 states to fund the process that the think tank will come up with. That was my idea. And I put that shit, I started putting that shit together. I had a buddy who believed in it. Uh, man. I had a buddy who believed in it and, and knew that I was homeless. And and he used to, he man, he used to help me out, man. He used to help me out. He was a solid dude. I miss him as a friend. And I'm gonna tell you how I lost him as a friend. Yeah, let me get on there. <sighs> we putting this together, I was making calls, getting uh, uh, different bookers, uh, excited about it and involved in booking venues in different states trying to map it out and put it together and getting sponsors. And so my buddy, he turned it into a, or he filed for organization. I went over his house one time and he was like, that's what I did. And he showed it to me. I was like, damn, he turned it into an organization, got the stamp and legal, all that shit. Homeless comedy tour, business cards and all of it. I did a show in Indiana. Got a couple standing ovations. I got it on video. I know what y'all thinking. I am, I am not the dude from the Green Mile. and blacks would the score be H1N1? <laughs> He's like, what's the H stand for? <laughs> Hockey. <laughs> I live in Michigan, actually. I live in Michigan. And but well, guess where I am? Racist shit. I'm from the or something. I got to from Detroit. That's, that's crazy. Yeah, I'm from Detroit. <laughs> I got three kids. One baby mama. Thank you very much. It's a damn shame. That's a part of it, but I'll take it. <laughs> My kids are black, white, and Indian mix. So they all fucked up. My son, he wanna open a casino now. <laughs> I'm like, hold on, Tonto. <laughs> Let's steal some land first. Thank <laughs> you. But the reason why I bring this up, the reason why I bring this up is this. This is a serious subject right here for the next five minutes. Six months ago, I was homeless. No, there's no question. I was homeless. I, I told you I broke up my, my spouse last year and hit me and, you know, I should have took a right and I should have took a left. Or, you know, the economy knows no class, no race, no creed, nothing. And, uh, it, it just, I didn't have any gigs for like a month and a half. It just, it all came to an end. And uh, so I had to stay in the shelter. It was rough. I stayed there for like a month and a half. But I always knew I was still coming. I had a gig, gig coming up and I'd be out of the situation. It's like being able to, you know, you want to go see what prison's like. You go there for a week, you volunteer for a week. But you always know you're going home, so it's not the same. Because 
I made some friends that lived in that shelter and they're still there. And it's cool what we did with Haiti. Uh, you know what I'm saying? But now it's time to take care of home. October 1st, I'll be going in on a tour called the 50 Club, 50 State and 50 Days Tour to End Homelessness. Starts October 1st. I'll be going from state to state collecting a dollar from every American to end this shit. You can't donate, you can't donate more than one dollar. That's it. A dollar. We'll be doing uh, shows in each state. One, one city will represent each state. And the first one is uh, Pontiac, Michigan, uh, October 1st. Uh, sponsored by the Detroit Mental, uh, Mental Health Facility. And uh, it's going to be huge. You can see it on Bible Time, CNN, all that shit. Uh, We're going to change the world this year. Well, I got a standing ovation and not do, uh, and I'm talking about you know, being homeless and blah, 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 blah. And someone, a couple people in that audience volunteered to, uh, to build us a website for free. The website was valued at seven grand based on my pitch and talking about the homeless comic tour. And uh, that was dope. It was dope. They built the website. So I'm going to take this to my buddy. Yo, they doing this. He was like, oh, that's fantastic. So we excited. Um, ran into a, uh, a, I was referred to somebody out in, in the West Coast. And uh, to, this, was, this was like a domino effect. I was referred to somebody in the West Coast and I contacted them and I don't know how the conversation started, but it ended up to where this dude started accusing me of being a sham, a fraud. Like I was duping people to that. And I'm like, this motherfucker don't even know me. He, he was referred by a person that trusts me. And uh, at the time she was my, um, she was my publicist. So I'm like, how he, he, I'm showing him the stuff that I'm, you know what I'm saying? Like, so I was like, you know what? I ain't fuck with this dude. I don't, I don't know what kind of he got on his shoulder. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm trying to see if he wanted to be a part of this because she recommended and thought that he may be able to help. And all of a sudden I'm a, I'm a, I'm a crook, a con artist. What the fuck? It was like, but it, it, nothing ever became of that situation. I just didn't fuck with him. Okay. Whatever, dude. But this other thing came along. Uh, this production company out of the West Coast. And I can't remember. I can't remember how I got connected with them. But one little bad thing after another kept happening. Just little things here and there. Now, mind you, my buddy is like financing a lot of this shit because... He believes in it, but these little dings keep happening here and there, right? So I got hooked up with this production company out on the West Coast. And so what they did, and this is when Twitter was really starting to boom. So I was really, you know, tweeting back then. That's how I met them. And they contacted me and, you know, I checked them out and they seemed legit. This, that, and the third, they was doing this movie. I got her picture too. I'm going to put that up too. Um... Uh, the people that were doing this movie, watch out for her because she's still out there. I saw on social media. It still it seemed like they still pitching that same damn whack ass movie. Man, man, telling the story, it saddens me because the tour was real, and and they knew it was real. That's why they contacted us. I think in retrospect, it was to legitimize the shit that they was doing. So they contact us and say. Hey, we're doing this function, uh, this uh, uh, some kind of uh, uh, it was a f celebration for this movie that they were doing called Modus or something like that, some Christian movie, and and it was going to be a fundraiser. They were going to do a fundraiser, and the fundraiser would be for the homeless comedy tour. The proceeds from the fundraiser would be from the homeless, and they was doing it at this prestigious golf course. In, uh, in in the West Coast, in California. Uh, you know, Will Smith had a crib out there. Uh, it was real, it was it was the real deal. It was, I, we had to go get a tuxedo. My, my buddy flew out there f for, for that, those couple of days I had driven out there. The 
we he rented us tuxes, you know, the whole thing, hotel, all that. So we go to this thing. I had another buddy, Dwayne. He came from uh, uh, Los Angeles, came up. Uh, to the uh, to the to the thing, he he got a tux. I think he brought his son, one of his sons. So we, you know, when we get there, it's legit. You know, they catering is doing their thing, and you know, shit is happening. And we excited like this is this tour thing is really working. It's really happening. You know, like we we about to do it, about to do something. You know, and, and I'm thinking to myself, I was just homeless a few months ago, and here we are now. I got pictures. I'll show you. I'm standing there with my, you see, going like this. I think Ruben was there. Yeah, my, uh, my old manager. You know, nice catered meals. When you went into the place, you uh, there was a bowl they had. You could see people throwing in donations. It was a donation. It said donations. So you could see checks and stuff going in there and, and, and cash and stuff like that from the, from the people that came into the uh, to the function. So the function happens. After that function, uh, we go to the hotel. The lady tells us, yeah, yeah, uh, I'll contact you uh, later on this evening, tomorrow, you know, blah, blah, blah. She was one of the people that that moved to Hollywood and act hot, what they call Hollywood because of what they saw on television. She, she's the epitome of that. She's that person, you know. Got the big glasses on, trying to, you know, look all, you know, starlit and, you know, drive a certain car and walking around like she and ain't, ain't yeah, ain't got a pot to piss in. She's she's that person. Look, looked apart, but straight up con artist. We at the hotel after the function. That's the last time we saw each other face to face. I drove out there at the time I had an 86 Mercedes and I was on my last bit of funds. So not only was I homeless, remember I was homeless three, four months prior to that. I, I drove down there, did a couple gigs, yeah, made a couple dollars, but spent that money surviving until that that benefit. Cause we were gonna take that money, use it to provide the finance, you know, for the tour and, and and things that we needed to make that happen. So I'm I was limited. So by the time the function happened, I needed that check. I ended up having to sleep in my car for like damn near a month after that function. I lost my friend because he then started thinking, damn, did, you know, did I scam him? Because he didn't know the check. He didn't know anything. That was something that I set up. That that I, you know, they contacted me and we talked and blah 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 blah. Just the third, he had no communication or conversation with them, no you know, no participation with them. So from his, you know, POV, you know, because he put some money in, he to to the, or, put the organization together to he 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 spent some money. I seen the receipts. I seen the the, the, the post production of the stuff that he did for this. It was legit. He saw, that's the thing, though. He saw it from he saw it from its emphasis. Like I was sitting at his house and just kind of was kind of working it through my head and saying it out loud while he was sitting there because he was a comic too. And he was like, "Man, that's a good idea." So I started developing it. So he saw it from its its organic birth and and and. And volunteered to do some things and start and and then just continued to do it. And then when little little shit started happening, you really know who really down with you when mistakes start to happen. And not necessarily mistakes, but um, pit, pitfalls. You know, nothing that you go for or dreams that you try to achieve is going to happen overnight. Something's gonna go wrong. They ripped us off, man. They took all that money. Um, we 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 could never. They never returned our calls. And I want to say I did a performance. They got a performance out of me. Yep, they got a performance out of me. They got a, they got they got me in a fucking penguin suit. Oh man, I'm so. <laughs> you gonna see the pictures? 
You gonna see the pictures, man. Cause I can't wait to show her picture and dare her to say something about it. Cause then she'd be identifying herself uh, as the person that I'm talking about that ripped us off uh, for this charity event that they did. Cause I, I still got the pictures, I got the invite. Um, I sure do. I sure do. And matter of fact, I think I posted a picture on Facebook a couple of years back because I seen her picture come up on some forum that I was on. I was like, oh, she just, that's her. That's her. That's that bitch. Yeah, after that, man, I stuck in my car for like damn near a month, man. I'm from one of my homies' house, man. Um, every now and then I would sleep, you know, on a couch or two, you know, in a hostel or whatever. But for the most part, I, I slept in my car. I didn't want to, I had friends out there, but I don't want to go there being a burden, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, not, hey, man, I need you to pay for me while I stay here because, I, you know, I had my car. I'm, I'm a road comic. I, I slept in the car thousands of times. So that's what I was going to do. I, you know, now I stayed in front of my, one of my homies' house because, you know, he rang out food, just that third and help a brother out. Uh, put gas in the car, whatever, whatever, until I figured out how the fuck I get out of this situation because my buddy, remember I told you about my buddy, he abandoned me. He was like, yeah, I'm done with you. And watch this. I ain't, talk, I ain't spoke to him since. I lost a friend over someone ripping, ripping us off. It was amazing to me how I could lose a friend when he bore witness to everything that happened. I, that's what I don't understand. He like he blamed me for it. That's why I, I don't get that, man. I, I don't get that. I don't get how you blame a victim of the same shit that you went through and experienced. How you blame how you blame the victim for getting I got robbed. And, and he knew that I had to sleep outside, not outside, but in my car. So if we were scheming, I didn't get my cut. <laughs> like, like, what the fuck? Like, are you serious? At the time, I was just transitioning from being homeless. And I was staying at this, uh, sharing this place with a couple of other people. It was like a halfway house type of housey kind of thing. Because we didn't have any heat or running water in that bitch. I got a burn on, I got a scar on my leg. I got pictures of that. I showed you. of a burn. I just seen it a couple of days ago going through some pictures. I got a uh, third degree burn on my leg from trying to stay warm uh, from a, um, a space heater that was that we had on the floor because I was sleeping in a, um, a personal reclining chair with a blanket and so because we didn't have any heat. It was wintertime. I had a space heater right by the couch, right by my leg. And uh, that motherfucker burnt the shit out of my leg. But I didn't feel it because that's how cold it used to be. If you live in Michigan, you know what I'm talking about. That's how cold it used to be. Burning that scar made me remember what being homeless was like, man. And so I, I, I thought my, I thought one of the reasons why I was supposed to be there is because of what I did, because I have traveled all over the country, because I have the. Because matter of fact, when we started the homeless comedy tour idea even got a tv show that we was gonna do matter of fact i mean get i can show you hold on a sec i'm going to find it um i just seen it somewhere um the pitch for the show they were, so we was gonna do a television show called the homeless comedy tour and the concept was because i wrote i was riding the bus then too uh on tour and so that's how i came up with that part of the idea for the television show that I would go on, I'm, I'm on tour as a comic uh, or a rapper or whatever. I'm on tour and I stop in these small towns. And when I get to the small towns of, the, of where I'm going to be performing, I go to their local homeless shelter. And I, I stay, you know, hang out for a couple of days. And, you know, like I'm one of them, because I was, and kind of peep out their condition and, and, find a person that we would be able to help not be homeless. 
So we pick a person or a couple or a family, and then we would go to the community, get them resources from the community, and the community resources be donated, services to get them back on their feet, even helping them get a job, if that's the case. And so I would go from city to city helping people who are homeless. And then part of it would be challenging each state and make it a challenge for each state to see who could donate the most towards this collective pot that finances the end of homelessness in the first place, the Homeless Comedy Tour. Because we can end it. We can end it, man. We can end it. We just got to, it has to be the mandate. It has to be, we have to have the will to do it. And right now we ain't got the will, we ain't got the will to do it. So I think it's already been proven that it's cheaper to take care of the homeless situation than it is to ignore it and do the things that we're doing now. Uh, if it look like right, we don't want to do the shit. And that's just the American way. So it kind of just fizzled right there. You know, after that function, I, I, I couldn't even get home. I couldn't get back to Michigan. <laughs> I couldn't get back to Michigan. I'm driving around in an 86 Mercedes. Gas was like $4 and some chains. Uh, then it was high as hell. No, it was actually five and some chains. Cause I had to put premium in the car. I was going to ruin the engine. It was already an older model car. So yeah, I, I spent damn near a month in, in and out, in and out of couches at a hostel for a few, few, few weekends. That shit was fun actually being in a hostel. And I failed many times in my career. But that tour, that was my first major, other than failing in marriage, <laughs> that tour was my first major, major rip, no, my second major rip off. The first was when we had our movie stolen. But that, that, that fundraiser, that fake fundraiser was the second biggest because it devastated me immediately financially because we invested money putting it together and getting to that point that we got to for this fake fundraiser expecting to be able to recoup that back from the donations given f for towards the production of the uh comedy tour that was, that was a part of my life right there man ended up homeless again Sleeping in my car. At least this time I'm sleeping in a Mercedes <laughs> every night. 